So welcome back. So we're now going to discuss the algebra of limit results for limits of functions. So our codomain here, in general, is a, a vector space. And therefore, there are only two general algebra of limit results here. One is addition, and one is scalar multiplication. Um, because in general, we're not going to be able to multiply two vectors together or divide one vector by another vector. So just two algebra of limit results here. So let's do addition first. So let's say that we've got two functions, f and g, and they are both mapping from the same domain and into the same codomain. So they're both functions from Rn into Rm. And we have that we will take some point x0, and we have that the limit as x approaches x0 of the function f exists and is equal to the limit vector l. And we also have that the limit as x approaches x0 of the g function exists and is equal to the limit vector k. Our question is now, if we create the new function by adding f and g, which means for every point in the domain, you look at what it was mapped onto by f, you look at what it was mapped onto by g, both of those were vectors, you then add them two vectors together, um, and that answer is your new uh, what this point is now being mapped onto by this function that you get from adding the two together. If we look at that function, then is it the case that the limit as x approaches x0 of that function exists, and 2, is it equal to the value of the original limits added together? And of course the answer is yes, we just want to understand the explanation. So, so that we've got a picture to help us, I have redrawn the example of n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 2. It's a nice, easy one to draw. Uh, so here's r2, here's r2, domain, codomain. Here's our point x0, and then we've got our function f and our function g, and the limit as x approaches x0 of f is here l, and the limit as x approaches x0 of g is here k. So... Let's think about how we're going to prove that the limit as x approaches x0 of f plus g exists and is equal to l plus k. Well, here's an example of where the sequence characterization is so much more easy to work with than the epsilon delta definition. So, to prove that this limit exists, we need to consider a domain sequence, any domain sequence that converges to x0, and we need to show that all of the image sequences converge and they all converge to the same value and we want really to show that they all converge to L plus K. And this is quite nice and easy because if we think about these definitions in terms of their sequence characterizations, they involve all of these same domain sequences that converge to X0. So that's how it's all going to work out nicely. So let's take a domain sequence then, which we'll call xn, that converges to x0 when none of the terms in here are x0 itself. And then let's think about what is the image sequence for the function f plus g of this domain sequence. Well, this is it written out. It's just going to be f of xn plus g of xn. So the first term will be f of x1 plus g of x1, because that's the definition of how this function f plus g works. Then the second term will be f of x2 plus g of x2, and it will continue on. So the general nth term will be f of xn plus g of xn. But you can see that this is a sequence, a sequence of vectors, that you've got by adding together two separate sequences, namely the sequence f of xn and the sequence g of xn. And we know something about those sequences. So because we know the limit as x approaches x0 of f is equal to L, we know that the image sequence under f of this domain sequence converges and it converges to L and its image sequence is just the sequence f of xn. So this, if we got rid of this bit, this is a convergent sequence and it converges to L. It's a convergent sequence of vectors converging to this limit vector L. Similarly, um, the image sequence of this domain sequence under the function g is just g of xn and because the limit as x approaches x0 of g exists and is equal to k, this image sequence must converge and it converges to k. So we have actually just taken two vector sequences that are both convergent and we know what their limits are and then we've added them together to create this overall sequence here and then we can just use the algebra of limits for sequences of vectors that we've discussed in previous videos 
uh, to say that therefore this sequence does converge and it converges to the limits added together. So this converges and it converges to L plus K. And nothing we did required it to be a specific domain sequence. So the argument holds true for all domain sequences and hence the sequence characterization is fulfilled for this limit to exist and its limit is going to be L plus K. So that was easy. So scalar multiplication now, so we only need one function for this, so I've got rid of anything involving g. So we've still got our function f from rn to rm, and we start with the assumption that the limit as x approaches x0 of f exists and is equal to this limit vector l. And now we need some real number to scalar multiply this function by, so we'll call that scalar or real number lambda, so lambda is an element of the real numbers. And now we're going to create a new function that's the scalar multiple of f, which means you, for every point in the domain, you look at what it was being mapped onto by f, that was some vector in Rm, uh, R2 in this pictorial example here, and then you take that vector and scale and multiply it by lambda, that's now what it's going to be mapped onto by the function lambda f. And the question is now, if this is true, is it the case that the limit as x approaches x0 of our new function lambda times f exists, and is it just equal to lambda times the limit vector l? And of course the answer is yes, but let's think about why. So again, the easiest way to do this is with the sequence characterization, far easier than doing it with epsilon delta. So what we need to show then is that if we take any domain sequence that converges to x0, that the image sequence under lambda of f converges and always converges to the same thing, then we'll know that the limit does exist and we'll know what the limit is equal to. So here is a domain sequence that converges to x0. Again, I haven't written out, but we want the terms to not equal x0 itself. Then if we think about what its image sequence under the function lambda times f is, it'll just be lambda times f of xn, because this is how that function lambda of f is defined. So this will be the image sequence lambda f x1, then the second term will be lambda f x2, and it will continue on like so. And this is easy now because we've just got a sequence of vectors, but this sequence of vectors is just a scalar multiple times a sequence of vectors that we know something about. Because if we took the image sequence of this domain sequence under the function f, then we would get this bit here without the lambda. And because this limit is assumed to exist, we know that that image sequence must converge and must always converge to L then all we've done is taken that sequence and multiply every single term in it by a scalar. And we know from, again, the corresponding results in the algebra of limits for sequences of vectors, that when you do that, you will end up with another convergent sequence and it will converge to just lambda times the limit of your original sequence of vectors. So this sequence we can now conclude must converge and it must converge to lambda times L and that holds no matter what domain sequence you picked. Ergo, it satisfies the sequence characterization for the existence of this limit and the limit is lambda times L. So we're about to finish then. Just before we do, I would just like to say something about the definition for point continuity of a multivariable function. So if we have a function f from Rn to Rm, then the definition of this function being continuous at a point x0 in the domain is that the limit as x approaches x0 of the function exists and is equal to the value of the function at that point. So it's equal to f of x0. And if this is the case, then if you think about the epsilon delta definition and the sequence characterization for this limit, you no longer need to worry about excluding the center point x0 from the epsilon delta definition because x0 is always being mapped onto the actual value of the limit itself, so it's not going to cause a problem. It's being mapped to the center of those epsilon balls always, so it will always satisfy, you know, if you include it in the delta ball and no longer need to delete it out, it's always going to be mapped into epsilon balls of whatever epsilon you like, no matter how small you make it, because it's being mapped onto the center point of them. Similarly, you can remove the problem with the sequence characterization where you have to exclude x0 from the domain sequences. Again, if you have x0 now in the domain sequences, if you look at what it's being mapped onto, what its corresponding terms in the image sequences will be, there will be f of x0, which isn't going to scupper your convergence of the sequence to the limit, which is f of x0, because no matter how many f of x0s you put in the sequence, that doesn't 
cause any problem with it converging to f of x zero overall. So yeah, in the case of continuity, you don't need to worry about excluding x zero from the epsilon delta uh, definition, delta balls, and um, excluding x zero from the domain sequences in the sequence characterization. So we'll finish there. Thank you for watching.